I, I, I will tell you the most impactful part of um, my business or how I started it was from deployment though, single-handedly. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you right now, that is why I started a business. Um, it was a mix between, you know, um, putting all your time and effort into different missions and having to be the adult babysitter um, and kind of have to jump through the hoops. So as an officer, you're playing the middle ground, like, oh, CEO wants this ex and his expectations this. Um, your your guys get pissed off, your E5s get pissed off, and they don't see the full picture. <laughs> right. You might, me, I might not even see the full picture, but I'm the middleman between, the, the, you know, 35 dudes and my boss. Mm -hmm. And my boss says one thing and 35 dudes say the other, and I got to find out how to make the middleman happy Yep. between the two. And I just remembered what I was going to say. Thanks for saying that. Uh, so when I think of my, my younger self looking up, it's like, oh, man, that guy hasn't made. That guy hasn't made. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, man, if I was in his shoes, man, like, well, pff, I wouldn't work anymore. I'd be set for life. It's like, and then we look back, it's like, it's, it'd be easier for someone, like a younger person, looking into, like, hey, wow, you're saying, this guy says he, well, he's 26, he has his own business, his own company. He's set. It's not how easy it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's not you just make a company or a business and then right. you're just raking money. Um, so I thought, like, do you have anything to add on to that? To like the mindset behind that? Y yeah, because I know it's it's like, oh, I if I got if I had my own business, I wouldn't work another day in my life. You can't just st you, you have yeah you have first victory films, but you can't just be like I'm retiring. <laughs> like, there's yeah, more, there's more to that. So it's, for a lame for a layman, like, I, can I try to help them understand like that concept? That concept's tricky because it's um, it's a toss up, right? It's when you work for yourself, you you have to know what you're weak at. You have to know that you're going to fail, and you have to know that if you don't go out there and get clients and get money, you're going to starve. So it's a little more it's a little more pressure than people think because they're like, oh, you have a business that must be nice that you don't have to go to work, you can sleep in. <laughs> oh, it's great, I could sleep in, but you know, if I do that and too I many times, work. <laughs> yeah, then it's <laughs> and then I don't get money, and then what? <laughs> it's just a business without money, <laughs> so. right? And a business by definition makes revenue, so if it's anything but that, it's called a hobby. Yeah, and hobbies are fine, but hobby literally doesn't pay the bills by definition so you know you're 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 stuck but that's where kind of, it kind of came down to the motivation for it where i was um very very unhappy on deployment for a variety of factors i'm not going to get into specifics but mm -hmm. um certain leadership within our whole unit um really was toxic and it, and it really really um affected me to the point where i was motivated to not work for someone Oh, absolutely like, yeah outright very very motivated because i thought you know all i thought about was cool i'll get an mba i'll do something that makes money and i'll be happy and i can have camera gear with the money and do something with that and eventually i'll i'll, I'll, I'll only do camera stuff eventually and totally flipped me upside down when i was on deployment i was like nope i will find a way to you know do what i want to do because i don't want to ever feel this unhappy at a job mm -hmm. so it's sort of like Maybe I got 10 years of bad experiences with all the good ones, and I got 10 years of them kind of crammed into one deployment where I was like, wow, this sucks. I don't want to find myself unhappy in 10 years saying, again, this sucks, and I just walked my ass right into that job that I don't want to do. So halfway through deployment, I started to work on a business because I said, I think that's what I want to do, and I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet, but um, pros and cons of deployment, I had when I had time off, I had no distractions. I, I couldn't see my girlfriend, wife, anything. When I was, you have a girlfriend and a wife. I have two. My wow. girlfriend's my cat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah. I have neither. <laughs> it's like, like well, this sounds like a you. It, this sounds like a personal problem. Um, you know, you can't go drink on the weekends. You can't go see your friends. We didn't really have a full day off for probably first six months of deployment. Mm -hmm. So you know that that kind of that's especially because like know? in the you had a combat MLS, right? So mm -hmm. or combat branch, I guess for mm -hmm. officers to be a branch. So yeah, so and it. It, uh, but when we had the time off, it was cool because once I made this decision, I said, dang, I don't, I, I don't know how to start. But unlike most people that have to juggle family, kids, and a work, but I want to start a sideline business, they don't know how to spread out their time. I was like, cool, I'm off of my 12-hour shift. I had to go to a meeting in the morning and a meeting at night, whatever. And then I would sit there and be like, all I can do with my crappy Wi-Fi, I could barely pick up YouTube videos depending on the place, but, but I could read stuff. So yeah. I read about what I needed to start a business, how to start one, best ways. I read through so much stuff because I had no distractions. So every day I gave myself at least an hour, learn something about the business, to take down notes as like a checklist, like this, this, and this. What can I do before I leave and come back home to set myself up? So I feel like a lot of people get stuck where they're 
they want to do it, but they have to procrastinate, but they also have distractions and they don't really. Right. And I think uh, sometimes if the, it, one thing that always helps me, you're kind of describing it there yourself, but a lot of times when I'm deprived of something, that's when like kind of motivation and like you get inspired to, wow. Yeah, like you mm-hmm. said, I don't want to do this. Like, what do I want to do? i would be so happy right now if I had, you know, was doing X. And so, and then when you get, you know, you're not deprived any longer and you're in the real world, you get in your own time, you can have, you can start pursuing that. The thing is, and it's like this pendulum because then once you get so like back into that motion, you have all this free time and then you kind of start forgetting that you love that so much until you get deprived again. So like every time I have like a long drill, like last drill we had was like freaking 10 days. And like before that, I've been having a very like dry period, dry spell as far as like uploading, like making editing videos because I've been real busy. Oh, but when I was, yeah, when I was away, I was like, oh man I just want to like go out and shoot something add a quick video and upload it to YouTube because like you think about like you're like oh I'm sitting here and we're wasting so much time today and yeah. like it's so nice that I wish I could be outside not doing this yeah but just imagine that every day for a year it just eventually clicks and you're that like oh boils my God. up and then wow yeah and like, you know, have such a like just a shotgun out of a